And basically that is that all the things that are part of Project Kinetica as of right now. It's to be of a, not a project involving old electronics that I found or I bought on a flea market, whatever. And I took apart and put back together in a different way. So yeah, that's the... That's that, and um, the left hand is older typically, uh, created earlier than the newer stuff at the end. Uh, but of course, yeah, some people say it's an artwork that never ends. It's a never ending artwork kind of thing. And yes, I'm working on this uh, as long as possible. Every holiday I can, I do work on this. But uh, there were two times or three times I couldn't. Uh, because, you know, Corona and stuff like that. Uh, but, yeah, I wanted to have a look at uh, how it's going as of right now. And, yeah, some of the more interesting things on here. Yep, this is the oldest thing that I've uh, created so far. The oldest. It's not it's actually the first, but some things in it aren't as old as you might think. As these two speakers used to be separate uh, from the rest of what's in here and just connected through some of these really thick uh, power cables right here. Okay, these are uh, buttons right there. Uh, a lot of buttons, a little display there. Uh, at this side, another display. Um, okay, so there's the little three and a half millimeter connector and that's the cable for it as well so yeah I, I thought I'm going to continue any further none of this really works it's just some artwork I created from all electronics I just put them back together instead of throwing everything away from me I, yeah I took the parts that are valuable uh, right there just uh, from an old Radio, it's an old uh, little uh, old right there. I can get that uh, bootleg game console off those Lexi Mark things. So I've got as a gift and an old pair of computer speakers in here. Radio and that's an old pair of cordless uh, telephones. So a board is yet to be found somewhere else. If I could ever find it at all. Yeah, that's the telephone input from that system as well. Well, this mess of wires and devices all comes to one project modular. I called it modular recently. I didn't call things names back then. <coughs> but I guess just I named it modular because this was the first uh, modular project, and that keep belongs to it as well. Uh, yeah. It was, <coughs> uh, this didn't originally belong to it, it was completely re, uh, re renovated recently. Let's have a look at some of these things. This used to be a brain teacher type device, but at the other end of this long wire, that's a 4 pin 3mm connector with four, three signal lines and one power switch line. So this is what's the original remote control, didn't you get to use ACS when you had to use it, had to, had to push 4 and 6 uh, whilst plugging it in and then power the system on and they could make sure that you'd hear a time, that is the CCS time. Um, yeah. Just pretending this works, it doesn't. But <coughs> so it's a millimeter which and accumulates in this little uh, uh, controller. So switch CCS, ACS, CCS class control system with manual uh, lav level, and the ACS has everything of course automatically. It's the control button on the device itself. Now this is the wired remote control. I've created another remote control recently that could be used wirelessly, but you'd have to plug into the telephone line as well. 
but this can be completely remade for several reasons one this little screen is now fixed it used to be just sort of loose at the back end there another problem I had was just with uh, overall just how to see it it wasn't great it only had the telephone plug but I added in PS2 VJ there uh, the P2 connector and USB and the antenna was also a bit of a problem a problem as was the fact it had no speaker so adding a speaker and an earbud an oral, of course this is was the power unit have uh, a solar cell that is now behind here used to be loose but of course I've put it back there shake sphere unit so I shake this also to a little bit of energy uh, but I will say which was a recent addition or it really was was this mechanism cassette mech not one uh, screen from an old Nokia phone and this little box from an old self cordless phone uh, which I've recently just cleaned off and added in several things. These siesta plugs I'll come about later on here. There's that, of course, and the main bus connector, another earbud. Uh, yeah, a little that's a barrel connector. Here's the clunking was a VTA earbud and SATA and of course quite a lot of switches to switch everything on the pretty much it's a pretty modular device there now <coughs> this very simple little device that converts from the barrel to a dash to a telephone socket and that was it and uh, you might think about how does this key belong to a project? Well, it's a key that's used to operate from an old, it's primarily based on an old cash uh, register. Okay, so there we go. I can select the different modes and also lock it up. We're not in use. Now, originally intended for this to. Uh, so a bit of a QWERTY keyboard as well, but that project expanded so much that it <coughs> pretty much became its own uh, thing. So I have to move around uh, this one for latest improvements I've done to a pass. This is the uh, sort of television part. Of it. I've given it a camera at the back end. This B camera is being secured. This was a little bit loose too tight to be used so there's the little SD card module I have an old camera and the vector processing unit now many of these everything else about part one of graphical one that is called uh, pretty much remain in change this clunky IBM model M keyboard right there you can see uh, this board of course but also the uh, other stuff around here, those uh, Sylvie original speakers, and telephone, and of course, this. I'm disconnecting there, is a telephone uh, connection box here. It's a two way unit. So, right there inside, I'm going to split our three connectors in there. Uh, which could be a dual connection there. I'm going with my control. This was the project that actually brought USB with it. <coughs> and figure out that earlier. Okay, so there's the little radio part of it there as well. And plugs brought in through standard 3mm connectors. And Ethernet as well. 
upper end it up. One, two, three, four, five, four Ethernet connectors. That is a USB. There's the coax and another barrel plug. With this mess of wires as well. So that's the main module of it. And of course, the little connectors there for the keyboard. The original IBM. Wait a second. Oh. The original IBM keyboard model M. Uh, and that's shipped with the original IBM PC5150. And of course this little PCB which has another USB port there and another smaller barrel plug. So pretty fat there really is a USB plug port around there. I'm gonna plug in Good manage to get that right because yep, there we go. It's the original control panel. It's not quite a remote as it has USB only. But this is part two, which I've completed for summer holiday of 2018. As far as I can remember, it was sort of May recess, the summer recess. I've done this part in here. Uh, of course, the original, I improved it quite a bit. I've top of four USB ports. So, old telephone, I've been already, oops. <laughs> really, <coughs> it's not a new part. It's a controller for this speaker. It used to be attached permanently through this cable, but I added in some components to make it usable through the detachable cable. There's dash shell plug, RJ11, and there's our four pin up top. And the still Grafica, but this Quadro is first individual component to get its own name. Quadro, because it has four uh, ports, it actually has five ports, USB, uh, male and female. This is the male. That's female. Over there. Let's go to that. That's female. Uh, micro USB, coax. That box from the main, the secondary main model, it's a vector process one. And 3.5mm jack there. Uh, yeah, so this is some of the stuff that came with it. I'm not going to have a look at each of these in visual, but this is a touch screen for it. Right on the back end, there's the cable to hold it, which include USB, uh, Ethernet, Right there, plugged in, I like that one, three telephone lines coming out of it, and two telephone ports coming into it, so let's plug the splitter back in, and right there's quite a bit of that, and it was old computer, but that is not part of it, I can go and break it later, uh, because, uh, yeah, that was based around this Sony Ericsson telephone and that's about the smallest I've faced in autumn holiday, about the smallest modular system uh, that is the little radio, external radio right there, the keyboard and the USB adapter which comes with stereo here as well also Telephone, the radio, and the keyboard, or have more my earbuds. So I could get it all right. That is the keyboard there. It's a, an old translator kit. And yeah, that is that. And due to the materials getting less and less materials, so uh, yeah. Yeah, I said that was that's part of a system, but or at least supposed to be part of a system. But these two are both individual objects inside of I would basically just call itself back. 
right there this is a there you go, repeater it was intended to be completely wireless you can see by many wires so it's accent antennae but I've added in a 3.5 millimeter port from an old computer yeah right there and a pairing button and some controls to it as well this thing here was a listener so you have some earbuds and a micro USB there but nothing else really just a little listener device so both are pretty so called 2019 uh, Compton goes and there's the uh, Project, or some, one project I created then, this is the first one in the uh, spring holiday, so the 2019. So there's the little USB. This graphic too is also a success to graphic one. It is designed to be a lot smaller, every component, including a little touch screen right there. Uh, it's a bit bigger, but all the rest of this is smaller, like the. Uh, not that, not that either. The control is a bit lighter, though it is a bit more spread out. Uh, especially if I count this little add on card, which works through SATA by right there. And yeah, it's in USB, micro USB, and USB type B. So it's really just USB adding card. Uh, yeah, and I've also added in this little phone line converter to micro USB there. And this is an old power bank that I've turned into an adapter from 3.5mm to micro USB there. Coax, and this little adapter will probably see somewhere else, I'll talk about that later on. Talking about this little empty area, that is by the way from a previous project, back to keyboard, uh, but that was little menu thingy not my I think I found on a flea market not part of it which gets us neatly into the uh, Fasimi project again many projects come with my controls so that was also technically my control graphic too but this is this one this is my control it's focused into a router or router depending on where you live in the world but I've had an old one but I've had a hard drive this little adjustment for the range of the device and some pairing switches. Uh, what's right now, by the way, there was part of the improvements of graphical one, so to speak, because it could also plug into Ethernet and USB. Right there. I might make the rest of the earlier things there. So, Rita, that plugs into the telephone plug. And a bar and all the barrel plug of a fax machine, which gave it its name. Unfortunately, or perhaps fortunately, there's going to be some improvements. This is never ending, truly really never ending. This, for example, is very fragile and needs some repairs recently. Uh, this is a little mouse brick with a mouse and the brick. Control remote, more than one with an Ethernet. Okay, so back here. A telephone line going up there. The Ethernet connection doubles as another telephone line. Plug, I mean. And of course, we connect here from the mouse itself. And another barrel cable accumulates right there. Uh, yeah, I can't tell anything about it. Uh, I mean, I can't tell everything about everything, but. It's from my control. Uh, and then right control. Pair neatly with battery out and phone there because it has an infrared uh, receive and transmit. Receive can be used by it. And also made for that project this little IR blaster which works way better than on my control. And there is the uh, old alarm clock which has turned into digital display now if we jump a little bit forward to the summer holiday this was primarily based around an old ray but this module uh, using it put that aside so frequency again tuning acs button 
uh, yeah. This was one of the more interesting case where I could disconnect through this little connector there. That's actually a disconnect unit. And the transformer there, battery and USB coming out of there. So there was some, another smaller talk listener there. That's actually a little chemical detector there. And, but it is also a listener. I can listen through this little earbud again to more. Now I can in contrast to this one, which is stereo. Uh, yeah. And also, of course, has to be obligatory micro USB. It also has a little switch because it can to turn it on and off. And that's why the character adapter is in use because this anything made beyond the flea market of 2020 that has two or more character inputs like these two can do a coax loop or an HF high frequency loop. Uh, yeah, so that's that. Uh, right after that, in the automatic I had to item proof on the oh, it's right there to repair it because there was a lot of broken stuff in it. Things were falling down. I created this little device there. This is a CCS status converter, at least for first device designed to be that way. It's USB there, it's B cable going to the RAND. Two, so I'm going to input chat, it's whether. Original device, electro plug-in, as I called it, and this is the actually that's this that one, and this one is for any other device where I put this is I put that's the input originally, but then adding I mean coax there, uh, battery. Little shakes there as well, some crystal elements to make it more efficient, and of course a switch to turn it all on or off. Then I had something pretty interesting. I remember to the computer. It was actually my uh, the second of a pack of bulk meters. So I had something previously before. I had a Pentium press and didn't work that well. Uh, that computer got taken apart into Project Connecticut as well. You see right there. Uh, that is, of course, the uh, front plate with power button on the back end. RAM, memory, little fan there, which I've created by just bolting some wood on old CD player, actually. And there's another RAM module which works through SATE. This one is pretty interesting because let's have a look on the back end of it. Spot that little anti connector. Yep, that's the Siesta type plug there and of course you might be able to guess that is also a CS plug there. Now the old speaker was also converted with PS2 and barrel plug connectors there as well. So plug in the other PS, that's one PS2 cable, so let's plug the other one in right here. Oh, one there, so green one of course which goes right there but it doesn't quite go into the theater plug. Now theater plugs can do both uh, USB and PS2 so that's a neat little feature there. I've already find some stuff I created uh, among other things including this old flashlight. A, that's a RAM module game, the hard drive, or drive I wiped out. So there is being created with, among other things, a uh, yeah, a central heating system, or central heating system there. So this is the bar meters, bar meters. Uh, yeah, that is the input and output. I would really like the old central heating system was replaced. And buttons, yeah, reset, on and off. Now he's setting up a part of the continuation and improvement of graphical one. Uh, yeah, it's the but it, it's a secure code, right? Secure code is on the original device there as a way to secure wireless connections. And it was the only device among with a TV to support it. So I went ahead and 
added here and the shortcut radio which plugs into Ethernet. RCA USB to see if I have that gets implemented and the phone line connection so split like this one send this RCA in. Uh, RCA there and HF over there that's a little socket on the other project. It allows for interlinking right there in the interface loop. Yes, I L. And of course, while like that part was the system here, part of that. And yeah, for today, this is this uh, props and stuff I'm going to be using in Project Connecticut. Uh, but things will change. Here's the fax machine that I have talked about. Okay, so a talking horn right there for DCB. That is. You know, a system that is DCB. Is it all? Okay. So the in this other uh, one, this is for kind of a looks like kind of a horn, but it's used for scanning purposes. Well, it could be used as a little switch there. It's missing completely. In this, it, it wasn't unfinished project. What I really did, I don't think it was B port. And of course, I have, since I have two boxes filled with stuff. So, uh, some of these devices came from school. And I feel what's in here is pretty old. Some of these come from visits. And yeah, some of these I just find on the street. And there's another box there as well, which also contains the tools and stuff. So for today, that's it, but I'm going to let you know if something changes.